Welcome to Open Your Reality. My name is Chad. This is part two of my interview with Brian Staveley, where we dig deep into a subject that many of you may be familiar with, may not. It is flat earth. Yes, we're doing it. So stay tuned, watch the video, subscribe, and I'll see you at the end. Now I want to jump into another topic that's very interesting to me, which is flat earth. No, I said, sure, let's dive into it. I haven't talked about it in a while. Okay, when, what year did you start looking into Flat Earth? I actually started really early. So before there was any really Flat Earth content on YouTube, uh, other than Matt Powerland, uh, that was 2014. Summer of 2014 is the first time I started to poke around a little bit at it. And by the, tw- by the end of 2014, I was starting to be pretty convinced uh, that definitely we didn't live on a ball, spinning in space, uh, a lot of problems with it. I did, what, like I said... I had just, I was just about to go into break. Like I said, at 2014, I took a break, but at the end of 2014, I did do one show uh, with somebody who had actually known about that for a very long time. And we talked about it. And uh, some of the things I said in it, I, I obviously didn't understand the topic very well at the time, but I started looking in 2014. Okay. And when you just, so how long did it take you before you finally said, you know, there's something to this? Uh, I would say, um, Oh, by the time I knew this right away, because right away, I'll tell you what I saw. And anybody can find this video. It's like a three minute stupid, you know, debunk type video. Um, But they make it look like it's supporting conspiracy theories like they do or whatever. And it's called uh, Stuff They Don't Want You to Know is the name of the channel or the playlist. And it was called Flat Earth. Stuff They Don't Want You to Know, Flat Earth. So I watched this three minute video. And in the video, they show you all sorts of the normal nonsense, water going off the edge, the freaking sun going underneath the earth and, you know, all the stuff that nobody really believes. Right. But right at the beginning, they showed a spacewalk. OK, they were showing footage of a spacewalk and they're like. Flat earthers think that NASA's NASA's imagery is fake. And I know I know photos can be fake, but to think all their imagery is fake. And that just rang a bell with me, though, right away. And I'm like, well. Of course, all the imagery is fake because, and we haven't got into it yet, but in my opinion, all the 9-11 imagery that we got was fake as well. So, of course, NASA's imagery is fake. That made sense with me. It resonated with me right away. Now, at this point, I had already known the moon landing's fake for three years. I already knew that there were a lot of problems with satellites in space, and I already knew the ISS was fake. So, it was like a natural progression for me. So, none of this was too mind-blowing to me. But then when I started to look at uh, a few videos started to pop up right before Flat Earth exploded, and one of them was about the problems in the Southern Hemisphere with the GPS, and another one was with the flight routes and all the layovers and where they actually stop. That was some of the really, really early stuff that kind of crept out before there were documentaries or anything. That stuff resonated with me right away, and that's when I pretty much knew. Um, you know, everything to do with airplanes on a spinning ball, uh, m- more so than even the deception of the Southern Hemisphere, everything to do with the way that planes work, the layovers, just the idea of a pilot uh, flying a plane, let's say north to south and landing on a runway that's spinning at him a thousand miles an hour or depending whatever latitude he's at. None of that ever made any sense to me. But of course, I never thought about it my entire life until that point. But that's what really, really got me right there. And then after that, it was pretty much easy to see it, easy to see the agenda against it. Um, and it was it was pretty exciting for a few years for me, but it kind of got stale for me uh, around 2017, 2018. Do you, okay. To me, I first came across Flat Earth. And that's not to say, you know, I'm, I'm a flat earther because I believe that my, I'm very open and I see it both ways. And there's one viewer that recently wrote to me, he believes that kind of like with the Mandela effect, how you could see reality one way and someone else could see it another way. Maybe we're seeing it two different ways, but maybe they're both valid, you know, in a sh- some strange way. I, I, know- I still, when, they, when, people, when people say that, and I know that I should be the one that'd be the most open to that, I get that idea. And somebody said that to me recently in an interview that I gave, but I would ask those people, like what observations and experiments that they've ever done or seen that would prove that there is a curvature or a spin to the earth, even in their reality. And I think I would come back with a blank stare. So, okay, fair enough. And so I first came across flat earth. Um, it was actually on the Joe Rogan podcast. He was interviewing Misha Tate, who's an MMA fighter. And he said, some people actually believe that the earth is flat. And she was pretty incredulous, you know, and that's always I. And right there, I was like, no way. 
you know, because I had astronomy books when I was younger and I read science books and obviously I was indoctrinated. So I wanted to disprove it. I think that's how a lot of people first get into flat earth is they try to disprove it. And so mm -hmm. one of the first videos I encountered was by a gentleman named D Murphy 25. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Oh yeah. I know Dave. I've had him on the show. Excellent. He's cool. So he talks about a lot of other conspiracy theories too, but you know, he, he was on this uh, European uh, TV show and he was basically the great interview. That's it, my favorite interview. Was it, is it the Macedonian late night TV interview? Yeah, but yes, it was. It was Yeah, great show. Great, great video. And he was making point after point for the flat earth. And I'm just sitting there and I'm saying, well, wait a minute. Like, yeah, that's kind of true. And I'm like, well, well, how can that be? Because I think that most people who look into the flat earth, who come from the global earth perspective, they really don't understand it. But once you see it, you know, in a video where they show you the diagrams and they talk about it, it begins to make more sense. And there were three things really to me that really stood out that made me take notice that I should be looking into this, maybe not believing it just yet, but looking into this. And the first thing was when he showed the map of the flat earth and he showed like New York is over here and Asia is over here. And when I would fly from New York to Thailand, we would always make a stopover in Alaska. I believe it was yeah. I think Anchorage, Alaska. And I remember saying to myself, I know Alaska is way north of New York. Like, why are we flying so far north to go more towards the equator? It doesn't really make sense. Wouldn't it be like if we were flying over like maybe Southern California and, you know, eventually getting to our destination, uh, couldn't really understand that, you know, but made those stopovers in Alaska. But when I saw on the flat earth map that it was more of like a straight line to go from New York to Bangkok, it made complete sense to me. And it was like a revelation. So that was number yeah. one. The number two is that water has to curve. So in order to believe in round earth, then water has to continually be curving. And it's not like it curves every hundred miles. It's curving pretty much every mile, a little bit. And to me, I know that water usually stays level. You know, we could, we could so that was, that was number two. And uh, the, third, the third thing, escape my memory for a second here, but we'll, I'll think about it. But what is your response to the first two things that I said? Oh, I, just, I got it. I got number three. Sorry about that, Brian. Okay. Number three is that when you look in the distance, so like, yeah, yeah this is something that a lot of, this is a, a big point for flat earth. If you look far into the distance of the horizon, which should be recessed well under the horizon, different landmarks. Anything, for instance, like if you look on the shore of, what is it, Lake Michigan, and you look at the Chicago skyline, you can see it right there when it should be recessed a couple thousand at least feet under the horizon. Uh, when you take like telescopes and you look out on the ocean, you can see, you think that ships go under the horizon, but they're right there when you look at a telescope. Yeah. So those three things were the major things for me that made me take notice. Sorry, go on, Brian. No, and I love those. And what did you say before uh, water being level and uh, seeing too far? What was the first one you said? What was your first proof? The, the, the first one was um, the flight path going. Flight routes. Yeah, the flight paths. And, and, and it's not just the paths that you took. If you ended up in researching all of them, you'll find out that all these layovers make no sense on these long flights. And they're almost all actually exactly in the middle rather than diverted a couple thousand miles up into the other hemisphere and back down over and over and over again. So that was a big thing for me. I love that. Uh, the water level one. I know a lot of, a lot of people love that one. I just, I, I don't use that one too much, especially when people say, Oh, well, look around, look how flat the horizon is when you look. Yeah. I don't know how much you would actually really see yourself, but getting into the visual aspects of the horizon and the boats over the curve and all of that, I think that is absolutely one of the best ones. That would be the next thing I would say after my airplanes, you know, everything about airplanes on a spinning ball would be, uh, well, we see too far uh, in so many instances, not only like you were talking about with Chicago being 50, 60 miles away from, you know, over the Lake Michigan shoreline, and it should be under, you know, 1600 or up to like 2400 feet of curvature. I mean, we have shot photographs to these mountains in France, I forget the name of them, they're like 173 miles away. And they should be even with the peaks of them, they should still be like underneath two miles of curvature. Okay. This curvature, this ball that they say we live on, 
There's no proof of the ball curving and there's no proof of the ball moving. And I would also say besides just that we see too far. And of course, that's how they trick your eyes, right? It's actually how your eyes work. It's called angular resolution. Everything comes to the point of perspective. So like what you were talking about, a boat goes out, people think it disappears from the bottom first because it's going over a curve. You pull out a good camera, you pull out binoculars, whatever you want to zoom in with. Guess what? It brings it back up. Do you have a magic binoculars? Do you have a magic camera? Or do they lie to you about how your eyes work like everything else? Well, of course, they lied to you about how your eyes work. It's just like a, you look at telephone poles going down a street or train tracks. They come into a convergence point. That's how your eyes work. My next favorite thing on the list, if I was to give you a top three, would be this. Every profession in the world and none of them account for the curve of the spin of this earth, <laughs> including pilots. Like, that's it, dude. All these professions everywhere, nobody accounts for this. It just works. Everything just works as if the earth's flat and stationary. I think you might be muted. You mean like bridges, tunnels, like they never account yeah. for the curvature? Everything. Every profession in the world. I mean, th these people would all have to account for it, you know, and nobody does. Right. It's non-existent. Now, I will say that, you know, it goes much deeper than this. I think a lot of people, they get to flat earth, they get to a lot of truths, right? Now, I disagree with a lot of, just like with any topic, I disagree with some Mandela effects. I disagree with a lot of flat earth proofs, but there's enough there for me that, in my opinion, this earth definitely isn't moving. Everywhere that we're able to go, we're able to measure it uh, as flat, flat and stationary, Okay. All the other points I made, I do believe most likely there is a barrier somewhere above or, how, or something that's keeping this atmosphere in. Maybe it's something we don't comprehend. It's not like a solid thing that we're, we're trying to picture. I do think all of that, but I do also think that many people switch one paradigm for another and they're not staying open-minded. And these are some of the exact people that can't see the Mandela effect. They'll get this far. But then they think that everything they look into has can be measured and equated. And you can't do that with the supernatural. So that's where I think a lot of people have had a hard time getting out of that and keeping the journey uh, moving forward. Sorry, I just went on a long run there. No, that's okay. So do you think it could be possible that this earth is just a lot bigger than they're telling us? And that's one of the reasons we don't see the curvature? I mean, it would have how, how much bigger are we going to say it's going to be, but we wouldn't be able to measure it. I mean, it would have to be, I mean, just so gigantic that we can't measure it between any two points. You know, I, I, I don't think that that's the case at all. Okay. Because Admiral Byrd did say that there's the landmass, like that's the size of the United States are bigger with natural resources beyond the Arctic ice wall. And he did say that. But he's also a high ranking military official who was on public television that probably would have been yanked off the stage if what he was saying was that true, in my opinion. OK, fair enough. Mm -hmm. So what do you what is your take on and there's a lot to talk about with this, but one of the things I wanted to ask you, what is your take on aliens? Is it you know, a lot of people claim to have been abducted, see aliens, UFOs. What, what is your whole take on that? Uh, my take is I do not discredit uh, everything that people see in the sky. Definitely not. I certainly believe that there's some things flying that people have reported and maybe even abductions. I just don't think that they're coming from, you know, trillions of miles away, other planets and all that. So even though I said I don't uh, trust Admiral Byrd, I still believe that there are more land. I still believe there is more land. Is it really past Antarctica, though? What if it's sitting right in the middle of the South Pacific where the GPS doesn't work and they want you to think that it's past Antarctica? And if anybody's going to explore, let's go to this barren wasteland where we're not going to find anything. We'll probably die off because of the conditions. Let's not look in the South Pacific. Let's not focus on the North Pole. Let's keep talking about Admiral Byrd and, you know, how Buzz Aldrin and John Kerry and the Pope and all these guys are making visits to Antarctica. I kind of look at that as it may be the diversion and not really where we need to look, but there is some truth in what Byrd said maybe just not where he said i'm not dismissing it all though the ideas of the iron republic and all this I'm not dismissing it all but for me that's just uh it's possible but it's kind of wild fantasy until i see any evidence of that yeah and one of the other interesting things that i found about flat earth i find it really interesting is that the sun and the moon are not what you think you know the sun is not like a thousand times bigger than the earth and you know the moon is not a rock what they are are supposedly just lights like illuminate they're they're illuminated in the sky and they're actually only about i think if they said it correctly 32 miles in diameter and they're about 3000 miles away from the earth i don't know it, 
if that's you know yeah. i'm just stating what they I, say Go yeah ahead, Brian. no no that, that that's one of the things i have problems with too they, they say that and i think that's just another way of us believing information people are giving us because we're being more open to a new idea because the other idea was a lie i don't even think that they're three thousand miles away you know, I don't even think they're even close to 3,000 miles away. Um, but and none of us can really prove how far away they are. But I, I think that they're much closer than that, honestly. Um, yeah, if 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 I was if I 100 percent believed in flat Earth and I know like it's what is it, like 20 miles up to the firmament, to the top of the atmosphere. That's another one popping out of the atmosphere and into space. I know Eric Dubé talks a lot about that, that it's, it would be impossible yeah. to, to pop into a vacuum. But yeah. Uh, it doesn't make sense to me that if the top is 20 miles away, that the sun and the moon would be like 3000 miles past that doesn't make any sense to me either. No, it doesn't make any sense to me. And just, um, I just, it's, it's really hard for us to shake our indoctrination. But when you do, I mean, when I stare at that moon, man, I don't think I could see that detail on the moon, even if it was 3000 miles away, never mind 237,000, right? Like, I don't think I'd see that detail on it with the naked eye. I just don't, even if it's right up in the sky, that's really far, 3000 miles. Right, right. That's a good point. It's like, because it's, it's kind of strange because in flat earth, they say, look, you could see the moon is translucent. You can see the sky past it, but at the same time we see craters on it. So how, you know, how do we see craters? And yet at the same time, we're seeing past it like it's translucent is it just a light is it a solid object what is your take on that my take is it's not solid but again the theories right um but it's my opinion i don't think it's solid i think it's some sort of projected light up there where's the source of the projection you got me you know um but i do think it's it's some sort of light that's up there and my other question is why why is it that they're faking uh space travel Space station, moon landings, why are these all being faked? Well, I mean, to keep people buying in the fantasy, to keep people buying in the, in the lies of outer space and that there's other things that are greater than us. We're not that significant because there's so many planets. And the, in fact, our own universe is ever expanding or our galaxy, whatever the hell they say. Um, and, uh, and, and besides all the, the control and the brainwashing and all that, of course, there's the, just the idea of all the money they scam out of people, too. There's that, too. Now, I do think that so much of this is above money. And honestly, these people print the money. They don't really need our money. But money, it has become like an energy for people. People strive for it. So if you keep thinking that they're giving money to this and that, whether they really are or not, you're taking it from them and using it for something. Um, I think that that's also a huge part of it as well. But I think they need to keep the lie going. They don't want people to know uh, where we really are. And they don't want people to know our potential and our true power. And they're doing everything they can to hide that with their globe and their Mandela effect uh, denial and, and all this stuff. Mm. Yeah. Then wasn't Werner von Braun, who's the head of the Nazi, uh, you know, head of the Nazi rocket, rocket program. program. He became the head of NASA. A lot of people don't know that. And on his tombstone was engraved uh, a Bible saying about the firmament. So yeah. it, it's all very suspicious to me, especially when you look, uh, Eric Dubé made a really good video um, giving 20 proofs why the moon landings didn't happen, such as like the moon rocks actually had letters inscribed on them. And there was like a letter in the ground, like, so they once like a rock. Way to place it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you I look at, that. and if you, and if you, if you look at the, the, the module itself, the lunar module, I mean, <laughs> that's the best part. That's the best part. Dude. That's, Go ahead. I yeah, this is the best one for me because it does look like it's made of tin foil, <laughs> shower, shower curtain rods, <laughs> yeah, construction uh, paper, duct tape, scotch tape, all of them on there. I know, I know. So it, Dude, that would just, that would that would get a that would get a failing grade in a fourth grade art project. Okay, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, uh, but there are people that do believe that we went to the moon. Uh, some people who don't believe in the flat earth believe that there's actually a secret advanced space program. And that's how we really went to the moon, yeah. not through yeah. you know, what they told us, but yeah, they really went, they just couldn't show you the real pitches. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you the, when you look at that stuff, it just makes you say, not only that, but when you see like astronauts with the bubbles coming out of their helmets, 
because supposedly they're shooting it in pools or you see the wire harnesses with the green screens. And sometimes they even do make mistakes when they're speaking or at one time they, oh, yeah. there was an astronaut that was holding like a ball and there was supposed to be in orbit and he, he the ball escaped him and it actually dropped to the floor. And you can pocket of gravity, dude, pocket of gravity. Don't you know? And you can see there was like five astronauts and there was a woman in the middle and he like went to pick it up and she's like, no, don't pick it up. I don't know if you ever saw that clip, but yeah. Oh yeah. I saw it. Sometimes I find these fabulous clips and if I don't save them, I'll, like, I'll never find them again because stuff gets absolutely buried in the YouTube algorithm. Yeah. You know, speak, let's, start, let's speak on the ISS for a minute for people that might think, oh, you know, flat earth or these ideas are just too, cr-. and I don't like to call myself anything either. I don't, I, and for a while I accepted those type of labels, but yeah, don't call me a 9-11, no planer or a flat earther or anti this. I'm just the guy that just keeps researching and uses critical thought. Um, I don't trust known liars. So there's a little boy who cried wolf. It's like, well, you know, NASA lied about the moon landing maybe. And maybe there's some funny things uh, about the ISS, but they're definitely up there or the earth's definitely a globe. They wouldn't lie about where, why would you trust a known liar ever? Um, there's a lot of people that will tell you, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, I disagree with that on a lot of terms. If, 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 now, if I watch, and we're talking about NASA, but even a content creator, if I watch them and they have different views on different topics, I'm not saying throw them out. But if I find somebody to be deceptive in any type of way, I don't take anything from them as truth after that. Why would I? Right? So NASA's lied to you about so much and so much about space travel is a lie. Why would you believe any of it? And then when you actually do start to take a look, like you're saying, the ISS, the ISS is like the biggest archive of media fakery ever. I mean, it's just a complete joke, the stuff that goes on in there. Never mind all the technical impossibilities of everything they say. They tell you there's people doing spacewalks on the outside of it while it's doing 17,000 miles an hour. I mean, come on, dude. <laughs> you know, they tell you they get a hole in it in the vacuum of space. Oh, well, don't worry. You just, uh, you just plug the hole. We stuck our finger in it for a little bit. Are you, are you serious? Like, what do you think about <clears throat> Elon Musk and SpaceX? I, mean, I think Elon Musk and SpaceX, it, obviously, it's a, to me, I think it's a complete joke. I think he's a propped up actor. I think he's there, him and the other space companies, the pri- so-called private, even though he got like $5 billion grant from the government for SpaceX. Doesn't sound too private to me when somebody hands you $5 billion. Um, but you know, I think that they're there for the people that have started to lose trust in NASA, but still be- want to believe in outer space. So they, they propped up these type of things. Uh, these, you know, Elon Musk and his fake red convertible in space. And they're going to build space elevators and space hotels. And it is, it, isn't it interesting that in Warren of On's bronze book in like the 60s, he talked about a character named Elon who is going to start a civilization on Mars. And now we have Elon who supposedly it's all a story, man. It's all a, a fantastical story for me. Um, and it's just it basically it's just to keep the space lie going. NASA's getting a little stale. Hey, we'll introduce this new aspect. We got Richard Branson. We got Elon Musk. We got we got Jeff Bezos now. I mean, we're going to put Captain Kirk in space. I mean, give me a break, dude. Do you think that many of these people like you just mentioned are actually kind of just like actors, just people put in that position to play that role? in order to make it seem like this kind of like this reality is like a Truman show. I think they all are just about now. I do believe in compartmentalization. So when people say things like, Oh, well, if the shape of the earth is a lie, all these people would have to be in on it. Uh, No, all these people are brainwashed and reciting the same thing. So does everybody at NASA? No, they're sitting at a computer. They're given false information on their screen and they're doing their job. Uh, very few people would need to know up other than the upper echelons. But as far as people like Elon Musk, Brian Cox, Neil deGrasse, they're, they're actors. Now, I'm not saying they didn't ever have any scientific background for a few years, uh, but they were clearly compromised a long time ago. They just read a script and uh, they just keep pushing, pushing the line. I do believe that they know. I know there's a lot of question like, oh, does Neil deGrasse Tyson know that the earth isn't a globe? I think he definitely knows with that condescending attitude that he has. Uh, I definitely think that he knows. Yeah, well, he's, he's basically said that the earth was uh, an oblate spheroid, kind of like pear shaped yeah. or chubby on the bottom under the equator, kind of like, you know, and, but you see pictures. It doesn't look like that. It looks round. And you want to know my theory why he said that? You know why yeah. he said that, in my opinion? What I always thought, right, when he said it? 
Besides it just being a ridiculous statement that all the flat earthers laughed at, what was your biggest proof for you? What woke you up? Let's talk about it again. The flight routes, right? Right. And the distances and all this. If people start to dig into this stuff as they are when he made that video and they start to discover that this issues issues with the lengths of the flights in the southern hemisphere and how big it is, doesn't the oblate spheroid thing come in perfectly to gatekeep the idea? He's telling you it's bigger in the south. Mm. You know, even I, though it I, makes no sense with all the images they've shown us, they could contradict themselves all day. Nobody notices. Nobody cares. Right. Yeah. And one of the other suspicious things about NASA is that the rocket program was first invented by the by someone who was an occultist. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm talking Jack about? Parsons, right? Yeah. Jack, Jack Parsons. Parsons. Yeah. 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 And and like like there was no rocket program that he could he couldn't study rocketry there was no school to go to about it and yet this guy who had like no formal real no formal education came up with the rocket program he was also an occultist and he was mm -hmm. big time into the occult and that's started it all off so for me that nasa has always kind of been steeped in occultism and their symbol serpent and you know having nazis for the you know for their scientists it, it to me, it's something smells rotten there, and it, it's just the government, you know, mm -hmm. it's just all the suspicious things that we've seen out of them. But do you think that the other rocket programs, like in China, the Soviet Union, they're all kind of in collusion with Same each thing. other? It's all, yeah, it's all one big umbrella of lies. It's all, they're all connected. They all do. They all go through the same thing. They're all they're all one. They're all one. Just like I believe all the governments in the world. But definitely, even if you don't believe all the governments in the world that go through each other, the governments that have a space program, one hundred percent hand in hand in all the deception, all of it. So China, I mean Israel, supposedly shot one up there. I don't know if you saw that like last year. What a joke! Obviously, Russia, the United States, they're all in on the space lie together. It's one big script, and they all have their role. It's not like, hey, let's react to what they do with the fakery or any of it. It's all one big script. They're all in it, and they all have their role. Yeah, they always have. I mean, how many times are they going to play the Russians off the Americans? They're doing it again right now. They did it through the Cold War. They did it with the space race. It's a joke, man. It's, it's literally these illusions to keep people trapped. Like they have some sort of illusion of choice with these fake propped up elected leaders. And they create fake division that becomes real, unfortunately, between with these fake borders and people. When really the people who are against, they're not other civilians. Do you really think that people in, in uh uh, Afghanistan or wherever wanted to kill us for our freedoms and bomb. No, it's so ridiculous. The people in Afghanistan couldn't give a crap what Joe Schmo is doing sitting on his couch in New York. I mean, it's so stupid. We're being oppressed by people that are trying to turn us against the other people that they're, ultimately they're just trying to control all of us. I hope you enjoyed that talk. Let me know in the comments section if you agree or disagree with some of the things that Brian was saying. I know he's a bit controversial, but the guy brings it, he speaks his mind, and he tells the truth, his truth. Now, the original interview I did with Brian was over two hours, and we talked about three different subjects. The Mandela Effect, and if you haven't watched that video, I'll post it on the end screen. We also talked about Flat Earth, which you just watched, and we talked about 9-11. Now, I don't know if the 9-11 video will be able to be posted because Brian said some very, very controversial things in that video. Anyway, with that, I just want to say thank you for watching another Open Your Reality video. Tune in tomorrow, and I'll see all you guys in the comments section. Peace.